machining down to two microns, is it possible? Yes, it is. I'm here at Pico where they do exactly that on their Rodas Machining Centre. So down to two microns then, Tristian, what, what are you making here on this machine? Uh, so the mainstay of this machine will be to make inserts and the finishing detail for the tooling that we looked at earlier. Um, this will basically be the finishing touches to our tools. Okay, now it's a five axis machine, isn't it? And um, it, it's one that you've brought into the machine shop to do the ultimate in precision machining and produce terrific surface finishes. Um, how does the Roder's machine do that? Uh, so, in essence, it's, a, it's just a milling machine, so um, it's just a, a carbide tool that we use that rotates at high spindle speeds, uh, high feed rates, um, and these carbide tools just remove material from bolts of metal. But, but it's, not it's not fixed to the floor either, is it? No, so interestingly enough, it's actually just situated on three or four pads, uh, and the machine can vibrate and move. Um, Roders have actually done tests on this to prove that that creates a better accuracy than having the machine fixed to the floor. Okay, now when you're going up to 42,000 RPM, what determines uh, machining at that speed? Is it, is it down to the size of cutter? Uh, yeah, so the smaller the cutter you use, the, the more the spindle speed will go up, basically, um, to be able to deal with the, the pressures and the torques of machining. Um, we use down to a 0.2 cutter, which is incredibly small. You're talking about two pieces of A4 bits of paper pushed against. Um, we will generally use very small depth and pass over to cut with those kind of cutters. The so majority of what we will use is waveform machining. Uh, this just means that basically the, the tool is doing a, a small step over each time, but it allows it to move a lot faster. Um, small tools won't like slotting. There'll be too much pressure on the tool and they'll break. Obviously it builds expense. We use a company called Rainford Precision or Union Tools. Um, fantastic company incredibly accurate, good customer service. And, and do they last? I mean, do cutting tools last a long time in this environment? Depending on what you're using the tool for, if it's roughing, they will obviously wear a little bit quicker. We're just trying to blast the material out as quick as we can, but for our finishing processes, tool life's fantastic. Um, and what about the measurement of the tools then? Do you have a, a system in place where you can continually monitor that wear? Yeah, so uh, at the end of each process, or if we put a new tool into the machine, uh, the tool will automatically come to the front of the carousel and then there's a blum lasering system. Uh, this checks the length of the tool, obviously because that's important to know that you're machining in the right place, and the diameter of the tool, and we'll set a tolerance of what we allow the tool to be over or under depending on how well you've set the tool. So I think our longest process has probably been about 36 hours, um, but because there is like spindle cooling um, through the temperature control system and there's thermal compensation for cutter life and wear, um, it can ensure these accuracies and make sure we're producing the best parts we can. So. Uh, getting in there and loading your parts, I love the way you've got two doors on here, one at the front and one at the side as well. That must make life very easy for you and your colleagues. Yeah, incredibly easy when you're using the control system. You're obviously situated right next to it, so it opens this door. And if you just want a general inspection of the part or work to your bench, which is behind the machine, this door is obviously slides open. How long have you had it here? And I mean, how long have you had it here and who do you buy it through for people that don't know? Uh, so we brought the machine through Herco, um, they work in cooperation with uh, Roders themselves. Uh, the machine came in in 2019, early 2019, um, and it's been constantly running since. It very rarely gets a break, but no spindle issues and no finishing quality issues. So. And do you put a lot of the, uh, the, the, the reliability and the accuracy down to how the axes move as well? Because what I notice with this machine is the tool moves in Y, doesn't it, and the, and the workpiece moves in X. Um, so you've, you've almost got like that bridge style construction, haven't you? Wherever that tool position is, you, you, you know, you, you've got maximum strength. Yep, um, because the machine uses like a touch probe um, system when you place a part inside, it always knows where it is. Uh, the Blum lasering systems measure the tool, so it always knows where the tool is. And then it's down to your CAD CAM software if you're using five axis machining to hopefully <laughs> not have any collisions or accidents. So. Okay, because you, you bought this as a five axis machine, but they are available as, as three axis machines. What was the advantage to you of doing five axis? Because a lot of the prismatic parts I look at here, uh, it's just face machining. Um, yeah, so the classic example would be a three axis machine limited by its Z step downs. Um, we would generally work to about five microns to produce a finish because we don't want like a pyramid effect on the part as you finish the machining. With a five axis machine we can obviously tilt the part over, this allows for much larger step downs and step overs. Uh, the classic example is the tool that we showed you earlier with the point tool, 
those upstands using just Z-axis on free axis machining. That took 17 hours, whereas with this machine, it took about one hour. So huge savings to be made. Wow, that's inc incredible savings there, Tristian. But do you think, to summarise, there's any industry that couldn't benefit from a machine like this that can machine to such tight tolerances? I mean, you look at medical sector and stuff like that. This really is a true performer, isn't it? I, I think if you take an honest look around where these machines are situated, you will find it in aerospace and medical. It's maybe over the top for what we do, but because we want our access to be so high for our customers, perfect.